Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 10 things you need to be doing and keeping your mind on when recruiting. Now, before we get into the video, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's keep growing to 30K. Give this video a big thumbs up. Every single like on this video counts. It goes a long way, especially right as we post. So if you guys could like it the instant you see this video, that's amazing. And of course, comment down below if you have any other advice, tips, and or things that should be added to this top 10 list. And if you haven't already, guys, we will be doing an underdog best ball fantasy league for the NFL down below. My link will be down below to sign up for underdog as well as the link to join the draft. The draft will be happening sometime in the first week or so of September, so make sure you do get in. We have 10 total spots. I'm not sure by the time you're watching this if it's filled, so run on over there. Make sure to use my code when signing up as well so you do get the bonus and the extra deposit while doing so and the specials. And if you need any help with that, hit me up on Twitter or comment down below. I will help you out. And also, there's currently a Kelsey free pick on Underdog, so make sure you sign up and go use that free pick. It's basically free money. If he gets more than half a yard, which is one yard in a game, you do automatically win that. It doesn't get easier than that. So make sure you go down below and use my code so you can get this free pick. And always follow me on Twitter. Great place to DM me directly and ask for specific dynasty advice. Plenty of people have already been doing it, so... It's working. We're having a great, great time over there, and we're building a pretty good community over there. So now let's get into it. The first thing you want to be doing when recruiting is something that I just made a whole video on. So make sure you do go check that out after this video, of course. Do not click off of this one. That is when scouting. Make sure everyone's been so focused on the stats and so focused on the player and the height and everything else. They're not looking at their abilities. Their abilities are important. And I'm not saying the abilities they have, although that is really important. I'm talking about the level to which their abilities are. Remember, when upgrading, the abilities are impacted by skill points. The abilities do have to be upgraded automatically. So getting a player that starts with gold, like a gold option king, or getting a player that starts with a platinum ability or anything of that nature, does go a long way in making sure that you can go ahead and get the maximum ceiling on your player. And furthermore, just abilities in general. I've seen people take a 96, myself included, a 96 speed quarterback, 96 throw power QB, and I'm like, that guy's a beast. Then when you end up actually getting him, he's a 68 overall three-star gem, but he has no abilities. It all starts at zero and it needs to be unlocked. He can go half of his college career without ever unlocking any of those abilities. It's all the chance. So keep that in mind that getting a player that starts with abilities is huge, especially if they're a normal depth player, they're not accruing a lot of skill points. You may never upgrade those abilities or at least not consistently. So make sure it is so important that you do take abilities into account. If all things are considered equal with two quarterbacks and they both have a good chance of coming to your school and one has no abilities, but good stats, the other one has slightly worse stats, but all the abilities like platinum, gold, that's the one you wanna go for. Not only do those abilities gonna make them play elite and make them be able to play day one, like those abilities being great will allow them to play on the field day one and compete. It goes a long way in their overall ceiling because they won't have to use any skill points to upgrade those abilities. So do keep that in mind when recruiting players. When recruiting is going to look at their deal breakers. So this goes into, there's a few things here. First, the deal breaker matters because when you're recruiting, let's say you're recruiting a five-star quarterback and it's playing style and their playing style is passing. Let's say you go, right? It's an A minus right now. Let's say you go over and you spend the next three to four weeks just running the ball. You're running heavy. It's possible that you're playing style for a passing QB or this is a scrambling QB, but a passing QB specifically, let's say you lose it. You may end up in a situation where come week four, you're about to sign them and you get locked out. I've seen this happen so many times. That is one of the most depressing things that can happen in this game. You're about to lock up a five-star stud QB like this. You're so far ahead of Notre Dame. It's over. And then you get locked out for playing style week four and Notre Dame comes in and sweeps them up and you have no time to fix it. I mean, you could try to fix it, but it's really unlikely. So make sure you are focusing on deal breakers. Another the second part to this. When recruiting, using their deal breaker to actually get an early hard sell is super important too. For instance, it's going to take a few here. So look, athletic facilities and pro potential is what you have. So let's say you wanted to go ahead and do a hard sell on this player. Hard selling early is really important. I'll get into that later in this video. But let's say you want to go and try to hard sell right now, but you only have two. Some players who are novice at this game, they're not, they're new to it, or they don't, they haven't watched many of my videos or any videos in general. They may say, okay, I'm going to keep it on send the house. And next week, hopefully we get the last green one. It's possible you don't. You may end up waiting two, three weeks for it to give you that green one. Do not wait. Go to hard sell. Look at their deal breaker. Brand exposure. Okay. So we have athletic facilities. We have pro potential. And brand exposure is their third one. So that is very simple. Go find one that has brand exposure. It matches up with the other greens. And that's very clearly this one right here. So this is their hard sell. Done. Locked away. Now, yeah. Is there a chance that next week you could have just went ahead and you would have gotten it? It's possible. But I've seen some weeks where it's taken me three weeks to unlock the final green tick. So being able to just start it now is so important. We're only in week, I believe two, maybe three. Getting a hard sell early is so important. 
So make sure you are using the deal breakers for both of those aspects. Next thing is ignoring the green ticks. I made a whole video going over this, so make sure to check it out. A lot of people have asked me this, right? Let's say we don't want to do the hard sell on this guy. Some people have asked me this. So when, when recruiting, they've counted it like this. Send the house says it has five green ticks and that extra grayed out one. So let's call that six. Okay, but that costs 50 points. So a lot of people have been adding them up and saying, wait, but this cost, this is four and this is three and that's two. So four plus three is seven, this is nine. So what if I just did this instead? What if I did DM the player social media, that gives me nine green ticks and I saved 10 points, that's a steal. And that's just not the case at all. And I've even heard it in worst cases, like, wait, but hard sells only five. So shouldn't I just keep, just shouldn't I just keep doing this? No, do not, the green ticks don't matter. It's like, if you ever did math in school, one of those math exams that say not drawn to scale, this is not drawn to scale. What you wanna be doing is the one with the highest ticks or in essence, you wanna always be doing send the house until you can hard sell, right? So I'll get into that again. That's another one of these tips. So stay tuned for that, but do not take a look at the green ticks. They don't matter. They, they, they're not meant to scale. It's not like, okay, contact friends and family's four. So that's basically the same as send the house. So why don't I just do fours instead and just not go for the full 50? That is not true. Do not be making that mistake. I've seen people do that and I get these comments, right? It's like, wait, I was, I had a huge lead on Alabama here and I was clearly gonna win and then the week advanced and the second guy got me. That's cause you're not changing your pitch. You cannot, or your action. You cannot sit on the same actions the entire year. You wanna do these initial actions until you can get to your next tier of pitches and then start to pitch them and so on and so forth. If you just stay on these all year, very quickly you'll see every team just exponentially outgrow you once they change their pitch up. The next one is hard sell early and often. The moment you can hard sell, you should. Like I said before, this guy has brand exposure. The second you can hard sell, you should. For instance, right now, Let's say Bama and Clemson are behind in your head. If you were to say, I don't have the last green tick, I'm just gonna go with a full send the house for the next week and I'll wait. If Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia all did a hard sell early using the elimination method or the deal breaker method, I guarantee you almost positively, all three of them would jump you this for next week. Just with that hard sell. Hard sell is, that, is a huge jump. The first huge jump is when you offer the scholarship. The second jump is when you do the send the house and your full allocation of points. The third huge jump is going to be hard selling. And once you get the hard sell and you're ahead of everyone and you can see it, you pretty much can lock up a recruit by just keeping that pitch going. So make sure you keep doing it. That's the other thing. I've seen other people say, okay, so I made the pitch. I took off the actions. I made the pitch for hard sell. Great. I, I got the bonus. And then I went back to send the house. Do not do that. I've seen that too many times as well. You are hurting yourself. People, they think that you make the pitch one time. And then when you're done, you go back to send the house. No, it goes in this order. Send the house is the best action you could do. No other combination beats send the house. Once you unlock the pitch in the top five and you can do it, hard sell beats send the house. And that's it. Soft sell is used in situational moments. Sway is used in situational moments, but in things where all things are equal and you can just go ahead and do it, hard sell is the absolute best thing you can do and you wanna keep it up. What you do wanna do though, once you get the hard sell on, make sure to keep adding points to it. Throw the 25 on there. That's how you start maximizing it. And if you have a lead like this and it's been pretty consistently grown to that point, the moment you get the hard sell on, if as long as you're even, if you beat everyone else with it or you at least tie them the same week with hard sell, you basically locked up the recruit. Now, if you miss the hard sell this week and you see Bama and Clemson jump you and then you get on the hard sell and they stay ahead after that week, you basically lost the recruit because pretty much now they've, they're at a better stance and you're not outgrowing them. This is where the next few tips are gonna come into play with this. But when all things are equal, whoever gets the hard sell first, Whoever gets the hard sell first and whoever's in first after that first hard sell almost always wins, not including a, a visit that could sway things or potentially some other packages. And this is where the packages come into play. You want to go over to coach abilities. This is so OP. I cannot even tell you. I've seen this in my league alone. Under recruiter, if you go to the always be recruiting, most influential QB, those two are tier two and tier three are so important. And of course, you need to have your coordinators also need to have it. For you to be able to get exactly what you want on it but the combo of this tier two and tier three in the top rows and then down here tier one those three things of course also tier two but my most important of the first two but tier two and three here and then i'll go with two tier one and tier two here these combinations for almost any any recruit will make it so hard for any team to beat you i'm gonna give you a quick little story so in my league and i'm lsu i was behind on a five-star pass rusher that's from, I believe, Georgia. I'm LSU, I have no pipeline there. I was competing against South Carolina. I was competing against Georgia. I was competing against Clemson. They all had pipelines in those little areas. They were they were far ahead. When I opened up the interest, I was at the 10 spot and I was out of the, I was out of it. I was below the line. There was no reason for me to get it, but I had a pretty good class the year before. 
I went and I was like, screw it, I'll make an offer. I, I had 30 points sitting there because I, I like to save my points for this reason and see what the scouting class looks like. I went and used my 30 points to get tier two, three on a, uh, what's it called defensive lineman. And then I went and used the rest of my points on tier one and two. That ended up being about like 26 points and I had 30. So I maxed out my D line for that year. And then right upon sending the first scholarship, I was like at four. So now I'm in the top five. I was like, okay, that's great. Now Clemson and a few other teams had a pretty decent lead on me. And I was like, okay, well, we, I, we both offered scholarships. They have the pipeline, they have a lead. I should probably just back out. And I was like, wait, I have 75 points. I was then able to go ahead and send, send the house and offer a 25 like friends and contact friends and family, which was giving me a bigger accrual. And this is what I was talking about. When all things are equal package wise and they have a lead and they can start beating you, they're probably going to beat you, but everyone else didn't have 75. So while they were all sending 50 or 65, I was sending 75. So each advance, I kept getting like an extra inch on them, an extra inch on them. And this is where the next important thing came was once you could hard sell. Cause if you look here, you gain additional interest for every 10 hours spent. So this is where it gets OP. Not only do you have bonus for recruiting actions, right? You're getting a bonus. Not only do you have 75, so you're getting a bonus for all your recruiting actions. You now get 75 hours. So you're getting a bonus to 75 and people are getting no bonus to 50 or 65. And where it gets super OP is you get additional interest for every 10 hours spent. So now you're spending 75 with a bonus plus an additional seven accrual or whatever it is, right? Cause you're spending 10 increments of seven. And then where it gets super OP is if you can get that hard sell early using in the deal breaker method or one of the other ones I mentioned process of elimination, you then get a larger school grade impact. This applies to bigger schools or schools with better grades, but that's where then I made the hard sell and I jumped everyone. I went from 10th on that player to one by a large margin and then pretty much kept that the entire way up until a visit made it close. But I'm telling you, if you could do this, and now remember, you don't have you don't have a crazy amount of points in this game. You know how it goes, max level 50. So make sure you are either A, looking at recruiting classes first and doing it, or for me, mostly what I would recommend is doing it based on what you know you need. It's like for me, I want the trenches right, at least on defense. So I wanna make sure I always have good defensive linemen. I always want good D linemen. I always want good corners. And I always want like good wide receivers, right? Quarterbacks, you only need one. They could last a few years. I, I, I think quarterbacks, you might be better off just waiting for one to land in your pipeline and trying to beat them out. I don't think you necessarily want to spend 30 points on just one position, but like D linemen and cornerbacks and like wide receivers, I think is so important. Like those three, if you have your wide receivers, your D line, and you have your corners, right? You'll have a really good foundation. You can figure out the rest later on, but that's one of the, that's one of the most important tips I have in this video. The next one, and I cannot stress this enough is stop wasting your points on dumb visits. When I say that I don't mean visits are dumb. I don't mean don't do visits. Stop doing them in dumb situations. So for instance, this player I could schedule a visit on, it costs 40 points. 40 points is basically almost recruiting another player. So let's say you're a team with only like 800 hours or 600 hours, you may only be able to max recruit like 15 people with full, let's send the house, right? If you were to do four visits in a given week, early on, especially, you pretty much cut that down to about 12 to 11 players you could recruit you are greatly hurting your class when you do visits. Now, I'm not saying don't do visits. There's If there's a five-star you absolutely want, the visits make sense. But here's my problem. Look at this guy right here. He still has about, he's not in his top three yet. I'd say if you hard sell him just about this week and you keep going, you probably have two more advances, maybe three. I'd say about three advances before he commits. This next advance, he'll be near the end of top three. The next one, he'll be near commit and that final advance. So let's say I went to go schedule a visit and I said, okay, K-State doesn't give me a good bonus. Don't care about that one. Bye week doesn't give me a good bonus. Ooh, Florida's a good bonus. I'll do it and I'll do it in the week of Florida. Let's do this. This is what people do. Athletic facility, cool. Schedule my visit. Nice. Week seven. I just scheduled a vote a visit for week seven. I just told you he's recruiting in three weeks. We're only in week three or week two. He's not making it to week seven. You may as well have just cut a hundred dollar bill in half. That visit is cooked. It's burned. That is a waste of a visit. And I cannot stress that enough. For a player that's gonna it's gonna sign in three weeks, let's say you want to just ensure. Now, would I use a visit in this situation? Probably not. I have the lead. I'm going to get the early hard sell. Am I probably using a visit? No. Now, let's say TCU and Alabama both had visits scheduled. Alabama is a pretty big program. In that case, I definitely want a visit in there. Now, you're saying, well, why would I schedule a bad visit? You know you're going to beat that first team we just saw, whatever it was, Kent State, whatever that team was. Go ahead and just make and just put it on that week three game. Because you just want to you just want to make sure that Alabama and TCU's visit, they will jump you. The, the lead is not big enough to where a good visit from them won't jump you. So you want to just get a visit in real quick to make sure when they get their plus seven for their visit, you get your plus five or six to make sure that Alabama can't close the gap entirely. Because I've seen this a few times where I had a pretty good solid lead like this, maybe a little bit more.
and I didn't schedule a visit and the person behind me did. So when you wanna use visits, it's so important. You wanna use them when the people behind you are close and using them or a person slightly ahead of you is using one and you're gaining on them with the last method of 75. You wanna use visits strategically and make sure you schedule them for when they matter. Like right here, I have a pretty large lead. I'm pretty solid. No one scheduled a visit. Do not just go ahead and schedule a visit. There's no need to just schedule a visit right here for no reason. I see that a lot too. Like I'll see, let me find, let me find a crazy interest one because this is one that like drive me crazy like this. I'm clearly gonna win this. I have such a large lead. No one has a visit. I'll see someone go like, oh yeah, let me let me schedule a visit on this guy. And they'll still put it on week eight. Like it's there, you're not getting to week eight. That is not happening. And you have a huge lead. It's just burning 40. Instead, take that 40 points, maybe pull 10 off of another player that doesn't really need it. Like let's say right here, no one else has made this offer. Instead, I'd rather take 10 off this player. Clearly, I don't need it. No one's gonna even compete here. Get a 40 saving on the visit plus the 10. That's 50 points. I can now go here and say, let me let me get into this. Let me get into this running, right? Or let me go into a player that I've already given a scholarship to. And let me get points on them. That is so important. Make sure right here, that's 50 points you can just toss on a player. Compete for more players rather than throw visits, wasteful visits. Again, there, there's a use for visits. Just don't waste them. Stop wasting visits. I see it too much. It is such a waste of points. Next is don't recruit red gems. Now there is one caveat to that. One, if you are a one-star team or a two-star and even a three-star team, if you're a team that's just trying to grow, you're trying to get top recruiting classes and you're, and you're in an online league where red gems are being ignored. Let's say there's two five-star red gems that aren't being recruited. And there's like seven, four-star red gems that have like no offers. Feel free if you're a low team to go get them. Cause honestly, red gem five stars, red gem four stars are going to make your roster so much better. It's going to improve your recruiting classes for your, for your ranking, for your coach XP bonuses, for your elite recruiter status in that situation you're just taking best available overall and star wise because you're trying to build your program. If you're a competitive program, like a five star, four star or a three star that's competing well, do not draft red gems. I see a lot of people say, oh, well, a five star red gem is still really good. Not necessarily. So while a five star red gem may have a much higher floor than a four star, let's say, a five star red gem is most likely normal dev and most likely has bad stat caps. What that basically means is, yeah, you might be getting a 78 overall running back, let's say, and because when, when you when you scout these players they're not amazing off rip like you're looking you're looking at like a running back and you're like like a wide receiver okay this guy has like 70s catching traffic 82 deep route running 90 96 speed okay like you could see the vision he can be really good he's just gonna need some better route running and some better catching okay that's simple he's gonna be a freshman but if he's a red gem and he comes with normal dev and he also has bad stat caps he may not improve much more than this so while it may be good on paper for a low programs for a top program, you're not you're not starting this guy at Georgia, right? Georgia and Alabama, this guy is not seeing the field year one. He's seeing the field year two or three once he's got his route running up close to 90 and he's elite. He may never get elite. It's a, it's a player that won't see the field at most competitive programs because they're not going to develop well. Normal dev basically means they won't be upgrading their abilities. They won't be getting a lot of XP. They won't be upgrading well. Now you may get those end of season upgrades with coaching packages, but if their caps are bad, it doesn't matter. So do keep that in mind. Red gems are good if you're trying to just fill out a class and just get some, get the elite recruiter package open. But if you're actually trying to get competitive players that compete at a high level, red gems are not it. It is not as simple as, oh, they're just lower overalls at their star. That is not the case. It, it basically means they're screwed in other ways. Going back to something from earlier for the next tip is the process of elimination recruiting method, which I did basically touch on earlier. And that's proximity to home right here. You see in athletic facilities, we have those green ticks. If you want to do an early hard sell, and this is important, like I said, because hard selling early is so important. Basically, what you want to do is just go ahead to hard sell and make sure that you go and do process of elimination. What you're going to want to do is find one where there's two greens clicked and a question mark, and you're going to do process of elimination to see which one's the final one. So this one's a contender. That's two greens and one question mark. And you want to keep going through. That's two greens and a question mark. So process of elimination here does not work. This guy you're going to have to wait on or guess. So you want to just get off him because he's not someone that you could probably hard sell early on. Another guy right here we could try it on, as you see. We did it before if we go to hard sell and we go through if we go through one by one okay so right here playing time is one and if we go on through we have more than one as you saw before right here now how do you decide in this situation you can go over to overview and look at his deal breaker which is brand exposure like i mentioned earlier and you can quickly see that the brand exposure is the final one you need and that would be this one process of elimination hard sell is basically one of the best recruiting things you can do because Let's say you're in a tight and you're tied recruiting race with big programs. You're tied. If you can get the hard sell in week two and they all wait to week three, you're probably winning that recruit. An early hard sell is one of the most advantageous things you can do because they're still playing around recruiting actions. You're already making pitches. This is a way for little schools to also win. 
very easily. And more importantly is this, let's say you're behind. Let's say you're behind to like Alabama and Georgia by like two ticks on Georgia and one tick on Alabama. And you're kind of falling out with like a four-star program. If you get a hard sell one week before them, I promise you you're jumping them. If you ever wondered why are you being jumped in a recruiting race, like I was in first, what happened? You probably either A, hard sell too late, B, forgot to hard sell entirely, or the person behind you beat you. I see it all the time. That's why by week three or four, if I don't have enough green ticks and I don't, my process elimination is not working because I can't do it based on their deal breaker yet. I start to get really scared because by week three or four, I know other teams already unlocked their greens and I haven't. And that's when you start to lose recruits. So make sure you're doing that. The last step, like I mentioned earlier, with getting the 75 points to 65 points to recruiting packages, make sure you are allocating all your points. First and foremost, do not leave hours on the board, especially early on. But more importantly, if I want a guy, make sure you're putting all your points right here. I'm versing Texas. I'm versing Texas and I'm Tennessee. I have a decent lead. Now you might say, okay, well, what if I take 10 off here? I just send the 50 because I have the lead. No, Te Texas probably has 65 make sure when you're going for recruits go all in now there's two factors to this like there's the whole opportunity cost thing that plays into role and you might be saying wait if i just send 50 and i can maintain this lead and i can take 10 off of everyone can i just get an extra recruit or two while that's true you have to see where you're losing down the line if you put 65 and 75 on all these guys that you can you may lock them all up by week four instead of week six now first and foremost you may lose them so there's two there's two factors here if you do it this way and you lock them up by week four, that means in week four, you can instantly accrue back like 250 hours from all those players that you were sending on and instantly start recruiting new players. And if most other teams aren't done with their, I call it like the recruiting waves, if they're still on their first recruiting wave, they're all so focused on those five stars and those high tier four stars that they're not ready to recruit the next level of four stars and three stars that went unrecruited. So you can start early and you basically lock up a second wave before anyone else can. And that's how you get a truly elite class. Second, you also want to be winning. Locking them up earlier means you're probably winning these battles. So that's why it's so important to make sure you're putting in all your hours. Now, keep this in mind. Again, you're saying, well, what can I just like separate them and allocate across the board and spread a little thin? While you can, here's the difference. If you lock them all up by week four, because you sent more, by week four, you got your 250 back. If you send everyone 40, you may be doing this to week six. While you may be recruiting more players, you're technically never get. you're not getting those hours back to almost week seven now. That's three weeks that you didn't get your 250 back for. That's 750. So while you think you may have been saving a little bit up front, you're actually losing a lot because you want to be ending battles early as possible, which is exactly why insta committing is so important because if you can get some insta commits, you basically get four guys off rip and you can now reallocate that 200 points somewhere else. But guys, that's about it for the video. I hope these 10 tips helped you. If you have anything else to add, comment them down below. I appreciate everything you guys add. There could be probably a hundred tips in this video. So make sure you do toss it down below. If you got, if you made it this far, can you please like the video? Let's get to a thousand likes. It helps with the channel a lot. Subscribe if you're new and you made it this far. And of course, if you haven't already, check out my underdog fantasy link down below. Come join our league. Come draft against me and compete. Let's see who can win. It'll be a fun time. We can kind of track it throughout the year. So be, it's going to be great. And if you haven't, make sure to use my code to sign up. That way you also get the bonus and the specials while doing it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Peace.